So my name is James Burke and I'm here with Ben Smith and we're with, both with the Moon Society and we'd like to talk to you about Lunarpedia. Um, Lunarpedia is a free online encyclopedia that uh, the Moon Society started in 2007 and we're trying to really grow it in a big way. In the near future, we'd like to add a lot of new volunteers and work on some mini projects within, within this main project overall. Um, so let me talk first about what Lunarpedia is and um, kind of what the goals of it are. So it's an online encyclopedia that uses wiki technology. So the same software that runs MediaWiki, um, it's called, the software is called, I'm sorry, the same software that runs Wikipedia the software is called MediaWiki, and that's what we use for Lunarpedia. And so there's a lot of the same features and syntax and extensions and other technical things that Wikipedia has that is a very rich environment for people maintaining content. And so what we try to do is keep Lunarpedia up to the cutting edge with what is available um, from the MediaWiki team. And we've been able to do that pretty successfully by keeping those software updates coming. Um, and Lunarpedia, we also see it as uh, a, a resource for everyone around the world. It's public domain content. So there's no restriction on the licensing of, the con of using the content. There's no licensing. There's no requirements to attribute Lunarpedia if you use the content somewhere else. And that's by design, like we want we want these, the wiki, Lunarpedia, to be something that is a useful resource for other projects and something that people will want to contribute more to um, and, and not having those requirements of putting on a, a content license is part of that. Lunarpedia is 100% maintained by volunteers. We're all volunteers. And um, as is, you know, Wikipedia. You know, Wikipedia is mostly maintained by volunteers and because there's so much attention put on it, they act, the volunteers actually do a really good job of keeping that up to date. And so, and we've had similar experiences um, seeing how adding some volunteers to Marspedia has really improved the quality of it. And folks have come up with new ideas of things we didn't even realize we would be a good idea for, for Marspedia that they've then gone off and done a bunch of work and, and contributed it to. So, so we want to grow the volunteer base because it grows, it improves the quality overall of the wiki. Uh, Lunarpedia is also a way for us as the Moon Society to promote what we're doing, uh, promote the ideas around the exploration and settlement of the moon. And so one of the things we uh, have a lot of on Lunarpedia is content about future missions, content about uh, the future settlement of the moon and what are those technologies going to need to be um, and what do you do when you're on the moon. Um, and so uh, having a good set of uh, categories is one way that we can foster the ideas around the human exploration and settlement of Luna and I'll talk about the categories we're, we're, we're looking at um, in a little bit. Lunarpedia can also be um, a project wiki. And what I mean by that is it can be a place for people to share information about what they're doing um, and a place to store things like uh, uh, st procedure steps for something. Um, a lot of times in the corporate world, people will use wikis as a place for knowledge to be um, uh, stored and maintained over time. So if an organization has a lot of procedures and processes, they'll have a lot of that up in the wiki and people can maintain and make changes to it as, as those processes and procedures, cha procedures change. And so for all the space advocacy organizations like the Moon Society and others, they can use Lunarpedia as a place to share knowledge and store knowledge. And then finally, it's a great chapter tool. Um, if, if you want to have a project for your chapter, this is a great project that everyone can work on. People can work on in their spare time. Maybe as a chapter, you could uh, take a section of Lunarpedia or a topic you really want to build out and work on that together. 
And so we see that as a way to attract volunteers and, and give chapters something to do. Uh, next slide. Okay. Um, so how does, how does it work? Like in terms of a, you know, it's, it's a project long-term. Um, we host uh, Lunarpedia and we actually work with Bruce McKenzie and the Mars Foundation to have all, all three of the wikis up on a single hosting account uh, on dreamhost.com. Um, for those technical people, it's using a virtual private server which is basically our own kind of corner of the internet that we can store these sites on. And it has a lot of space and it's high performance. And so there's a lot of room for these to grow long-term and not run out of space. And so the Moon Society, we do budget for, uh, for that every year and make sure that those are, are, are covered. Um, I mentioned it's maintained by volunteer editors, also volunteer technical experts. I'm one of those. Um, I'll go ahead and make the software updates and the backups and make sure it's up and running well. And all we, we can always use help with, with doing that. And then, um, yeah, I mentioned it's MediaWiki software. And then it's a group of these three wikis, um, Marspedia and Spacepedia. And there are ways for the three of them to tie together. Um, there's ways for them to share content because they're all using the same software platform. Um, it's really easy to move an article from one to another. And then also there's ways to link to each other really easily too. There's a special interwiki syntax that you can use to reference an article on one of the other wikis. And so long term, we want to have all the Mars information on Marspedia, all the moon information on Lunarpedia, and then general space articles on Spacepedia. And there may be some overlap, there may be some things that are referenced across, like for example, if you had an Apollo program archive, maybe some of that would be on Lunarpedia and there'd be references to it on Spacepedia. Um, so things like that, they, they can work together and be have a, basically a seamless experience across the three. You'll also see on Marspedia and Lunarpedia, there's a bunch of tiles across the top if you click on this, the, the up arrow. Um, and you can actually go between the, the three wikis that way too. So here are some of the ideas we have for Lunarpedia. These are things we'd like to work on in the next year or so. Um, we have a category proposal that I'll talk about in a second. We have a list of needed articles of things that if, if someone wanted to volunteer and add content to Lunarpedia, here's some of the articles we want. We'd like to build a lunar atlas. And on Marspedia, we have this up and running for Mars already. We have a, a really good Mars atlas where you can traverse all the different areas of Mars. They're called, they're organized into quadrangles. And you can find all the, the named features on Mars that are named by the US Geological Survey. And so for Lunarpedia, we'd like to have the same feature where you're able to search anywhere on the moon, any location on the moon, and there'll be some interesting locations like the Apollo landing sites, for example, where there's more deeper content. We also could add some additional 3D visualizations to the wiki so that it's easier to browse all that content. That's one of the things that we'd like to do with all the wikis eventually is have 3D globes and even virtual reality enabled globes so that you can tunnel in and get to, get to the individual places and actually see what they look like. Um, and then we'd be, be able to have the uh, Marspedia and Lunarpedia content within that experience as well. So if there was an article page about a place on the moon that we had on Lunarpedia, you could actually browse that in VR. And so it's a seamless experience. We'd like to have a, a concept gallery of lunar missions and the artwork associated with them. We'd like to have a, an archive of all the lunar sites. So kind of go deep on each of the sites, what, what happened there during the Apollo mission or the, you know, the, the Ranger surveyor missions um, and, and uh, maps and you know, items that were left behind, um, things like that, as much detail as we can, can have. Um, we'd also like to have um, some image archives. So 
MediaWiki can host images. And so we can have a section of Lunarpedia that has all of the different famous works of art related to the moon, um, concept art done by NASA and other agencies uh, for lunar missions, and then public domain lunar images. Like we could have a lunar image archive that people could use for projects. And then other things that Lunarpedia could eventually have, um, all the conference archives for the Moon Society and other groups could be stored in Lunarpedia. So all the research papers and proceedings and presentations um, could, be, could be stored in there as well. Here's our idea for organizing all the content. And this was done on Marspedia and it was a really good project to do, to do this. Um, we ended up with on Marspedia over a hundred categories of content and it was a different way to browse all of the articles than just searching for them. Um, it's a way to find new content and so we'd like for all the content in Lunarpedia to roll up into these top level categories and as you can see they're sort of the themes of lunar exploration, um, the themes of lunar settlement, development, um, the science of the moon, so all the different aspects of the moon, like the physical description, um, all the, uh, the the moon outreach category can kind of be an umbrella category for having information about the different space organizations related to the moon um, and having things where, um, as I mentioned, you're storing previous conference information and, and schedules and things like that, uh, research papers. And then finally, uh, the moon in art and literature. So we can have a section about that. So I'm gonna turn it over now to Ben. Uh, Ben's done some work on thinking through what we might wanna have for uh, lunar science and some other aspects of Lunarpedia. So take it away, Ben. Yep. Thanks, James. Yeah, I, uh, I kind of unofficially adopted the, the lunar science category. And I thought we'd just take a little deeper look into it to see you know, the structure of how we're thinking about putting together Lunarpedia. So right now we've got four categories or four subcategories and um, we're hoping that most of the stuff will fall in them but we could add more subcategories as we run across stuff that doesn't fit. So we've got astronomy which is going to cover everything we know about lunar orbit, lunar phases, stuff like that and then the lunar environment, dust, radiation, all the stuff that we'd encounter on the surface in space around around the moon and then a uh, selenography which is just a fancy name for lunar geography and eventually we want content on every landmark available major minor uh, we're thinking about having a clickable lunar atlas there's the vr component that james talked about um, and a lot of the uh, selenography and selenology subcategories are going to be closely tied to the lunar observing program that I'm working on. So we get somebody to look at an object or a feature or whatever, and then they can click on it and go to Lunarpedia and learn why it's there, what it's made of, the science behind it. And then, like I said, selenology, you know, Mari formation. It would be great to have at least links to every Apollo sample. So if people actually want to dive into the science behind it, so that's kind of what we're working on. It's still very much a work in progress and there is plenty of work for people to do. Uh, next slide, please. So I was thinking about how it'd make it e easier for people to contribute because it's kind of daunting if you're just looking at a blank page and you're like, what, what am I gonna put down for this stuff? So I wanted to create a template and it's, it's easier to have a template unless, instead of just starting from scratch. So you don't feel like you have to write a novel. You don't feel like you have to fill out the entire template. Just fill out what you can, when you can, and everything helps. So this template, and this, this template is still a work in progress. And if you feel like you got suggestions that would make it better, we'd love to hear them. So we're thinking, you know, there'd be a topic abstract at the top of, of the page. And it would basically tell us about the topic and why it's important. And how does it relate to lunar development or settlement? And then the next section would be core data. And this would be, just the most relevant data with sources, uh, primarily for people that are just looking for some hard data quickly and they don't wanna read a lot of stuff to find it. Uh, the key feature I would like to see on this is properly citing sources where you found the data, because I'd like Lunarpedia to be a reference. 
And I'd like people to be able to come here and be like, oh, okay, I found this information and this is where it came from. And I can hunt that down and make sure that that's a genuine source. So we, we'd like to have, you know, guidance on how to properly cite sources and how people can use it all as a reference. And then below that would be expanded data. And this is where we would put all the data. And you know, all data is relevant, but some more relevant than others for what you're using at a higher level of, uh, of use. So this would just be for everything that we have. And if people want to do a deep dive into a topic, they could find sources there. And then we would also have a section for sources and uh, we're not expecting like APA or MLA citations. It doesn't have to be that, that formal. You know, the name of the source and a link on where to find it is perfectly adequate these days for, for citing something like Lunarpedia. We just, want, we just want to be able to find it again. We want anybody to be able to find that source. And there are a few more sections on the template. Uh, but the point is, is that we don't want anybody to think like they just have to go in cold and write a page all on their own without any kind of guidance. So we want to try to provide some structure for everybody. Uh, next slide, please. So I want to talk a little bit about writing for Lunarpedia. And there's just a couple of small points you should know. The first is, is that if you're going to post something on it, you, you need to have the rights to it. You need to, you need to own it or get permission to do it. Uh, we, we, there's a lot of legal stuff and it gets tricky and we just don't want to put stuff on Lunarpedia that wasn't given freely. And the second is if you do own it, you still own it. You're not giving away your rights or selling them to us or anything. You're just basically saying you can use this and I still own it. So don't worry about that. But the third point to remember is, is that, uh, Lunarpedia is a public domain. And that means whatever you put on there can be changed or deleted or used. It's a wiki and that's, that's how it works. So if you're submitting something and you really just have to have your work the way you wrote it and no other way than, you know, think twice about submitting it because there's a good chance somebody's going to go in there and add to it or modify it if, if they feel that it's necessary. Um, my personal solution to that is when I write something for Lunarpedia, I also post it on my website. And that way I have my copy of it that I can refer to people. And if somebody wants to modify it or expand on it or use it in Lunarpedia, that's cool too. Yeah, and if finally, I, if I, can I oh, just no, follow up on that a little bit, Ben? Cause yep. it's exactly what you say when someone own, writes a piece of content, you know, copyright law in the United States says that they own that copyright and if they're if they post it into a public domain area like Lunarpedia, um, they still have the copyright to their work, and they can go publish it, um, sell it. You know, just because it's on Lunarpedia doesn't mean that they don't still have that copyright. However, what you're doing when you're posting to Lunarpedia is you're basically making a copy of your work, and this new one on Lunarpedia is going to be in the public domain. So. From a legal perspective, I wouldn't put something on Lunarpedia that you want to go do stuff with, like in terms of selling it or, um, or um, if it's private information, because you're literally sharing it with the public by putting it on Lunarpedia. You're not going to have control over that content anymore. Now, you could maybe do a little, post a little bit to Lunarpedia and have like a longer article that you keep yourself. That's, that's probably a good way to do this if you cared about your copyright and using it for something else. Um, but just bear in mind that when you are posting it on Lunarpedia, the copy on Lunarpedia is public domain and you don't necessarily have control over what people are gonna do with it in the future. That's the whole point is that um, it can be used or changed by anyone. Yep, yep, good point, James. And like you said, if you, if you have, you know, plans, even if you're not doing anything with it, but you have plans to do something with it, a really good thing would be go in there and if there's an existing page, you know, use the template and just say, for more information on this topic, you know, there's resources. You can put it right there and you can direct people that want more information on this topic to your content without having the content on Lunarpedia. And that's still a valid way of uh, providing some information that, that we didn't have. Yes, absolutely. Yep. And then uh, the final section of... Uh, of writing for us now yeah, we'd like to on the template we'd like to have some way that uh any any work you do on it gives you some form of recognition yeah we want to we want to list a section for contributors 
So if you write a part of an article, you know, you get your name on it, you contribute it. You know, if you, if you put a graphic on or, you know, yeah, you need to do something a little more than like, here's a link. That, that doesn't really help a lot. But if you actually put some content in or put a little time into it, then yeah, you should get, you should get some recognition. So we just want a section where we can recognize people willing to put in the time and effort. And the next slide, please. And finally, I just want to say a little bit about the uh, organizational structure. So we have a very informal structure at the moment. Uh, you don't even have to be a Moon Society member to submit content, but of course we'd like you to be, but you don't have to be, it's not mandatory. And some of us function as like unofficial editors. So we review submitted content, we'll work with you if you uh, feel like you need a little help, or you just have questions, and we basically make sure everything on Lunarpedia meets our standards. But if you really like editing, then we have a place for you because we could definitely use more editors. Um, and we're looking for new people to help us grow Lunarpedia. So if this sounds like a fun kind of challenge, why not uh, shoot us a message and we'll, we'll hook you up. We'll work with you on this. And that's, uh, that's all I had to say. Thanks, James. Yeah. And we, um, we use Slack at the Moon Society for all of our project coordination. Slack is a chat room tool. Um, it has a lot of different channels for different topics. And so at the Moon Society, we have a channel for Lunarpedia and there's a few of us in there now. And whenever we do work on it, we just post, hey, I'm working on this today, um, just to let everyone know. Um, so what we could do is if we get a lot of people in that channel, uh, we could have more formal meetings. Um, Marspedia has a weekly call. It's Mondays at three o'clock Pacific time every, every week. We actually have one in about half an hour. Um, and so uh, basically, or actually now, about two and a half hours and like times are messed up because of the conference in central time. But, um, but anyway, we could do a, a weekly call or an every other week call for Lunarpedia if there's interest. We had tried that before, uh, I think late last year and it was, it ended up just usually being Ben and I and one, one or two other people. So um, it's easier for us to just kind of work on it as we have time. But if there is interest and if it helps people stay focused, we, we can do a weekly call. We're willing to do that. Yep, definitely. I'd like to do that. That'd be great. Get a little more structure. It'd be terrific. Yeah. So here's a slide on how you can help if you're interested. Um, you can go get an account for free uh, on for Lunarpedia. It's, you just go to lunarpedia.org, click on the top right uh, request account, and we'll set you up with an account really quickly. And then you'll be able to log in. You'll be able to make any changes you want to the wiki. You can edit um, any article. There's options to edit with a what you see is what you get type editor. That's kind of like Microsoft Word. And then there's an option to edit the wiki source code, which if you're a programmer like me, I usually prefer that route because I can see exactly what uh, the hyperlinks are doing and the other formatting of the page. Um, so that you have those two options to edit an article. You can also upload images through there when you're logged in. And um, yeah, it's a really great tool overall. We have things that are called stub articles. So look, you can look for stubs and fill that out. Um, we also have articles that are tagged needs revision. So you can find one of those. Uh, or you can write new articles. And like I said before, there's a needed articles list that we maintain. It's in the left navigation. Uh, and, and you can add to that, help us come up with new ideas for articles and add those to the needed articles list. Uh, we, were, we are interested in doing some type of student internship program. We've offered this to different universities. Um, what we think is if a university has a science journalism program, this would be a great opportunity for internships uh, and for students that are going into the field of science journalism. So. You could help us with that program, um, helping contact universities, helping um, if we get interns and students, helping to give them work to do and check in with them. Um, also writing them evaluations, whatever paperwork the university might need to prove that they worked with us on, on this volunteer project as part of their internship program or capstone program. So if you, if you have an interest in sort of going that route and helping, helping young people to learn more about uh, science journalism and participating in a project like this. Uh, we could use your help with that too. Definitely tell people about Lunarpedia, tell people it's out there, tell your teacher colleagues, 
and uh, folks in the education area that we, we are, were around and that we're trying to do some of this work. And then finally, if you have content that uh, might fit for Lunarpedia that's, uh, that you're willing to share with us, we'd love to have you submit that to us. You could either upload it yourself or you could contact us and, co and coordinate with you how best to get it up there. Um, I've done a lot of work of, you know, someone sends me a, a Microsoft Word document and I need to convert it into a media wiki article and I, I know how to do that pretty quickly. So help, happy to help with things like that. And that's basically what we had for today. Um, I'll go ahead now and open it up to any questions that folks have. So please feel free to unmute yourself and if you'd like, turn on your video and ask your question. Um, Calvin Gluck asks, can you provide guidance for the use of InnerWiki or similar methods to contribute content that's relevant to both Lunarpedia and Marspedia and specific to neither? Okay, so basically you're asking Calvin, if I have content that may fit in one or the other, how do I make sure that it shows up everywhere and, and like where does it land? You do have to decide which one of these to use. And so the rule of thumb is if it's super specific to the moon, use Lunarpedia, super specific to Mars, use Marspedia, and specific to neither, if it's a general space article, put it on Spacepedia. That one needs the most help. That one is, has the least amount of content right now. Um, it's a, definitely a long-term project of mine and others to go through Spacepedia and put in pages for all the different space missions going back to Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, the shuttle missions. I'd love to do that. I'd love to have all the shuttle patches in there. Um, I just haven't had time to do that yet. But uh, if, you, if you'd like to help build out Spacepedia, that's definitely something we, could, we would appreciate. Um, but back to your question, Calvin, like how would you do that? You first pick which one you're gonna upload the article into, upload it in there and get it all ready. And then you can go on to the other two and find places where you wanna reference that content. And there's an inner wiki syntax. Um, so if, if it's an article on Spacepedia, you would actually find the name of the title of the article and then you'd prefix that with space P colon and then the name of the article and Marspedia or Lunarpedia would know, okay, that's a Spacepedia article. So it'll tack on the URL beginning to it. And uh, it would uh, be able to pick that up easily and link that seamlessly. Thanks, James. That's what I thought. I appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. No problem. Okay. Um, I know we're at time, but I just want to throw it out if there's any other questions that folks have. Uh, Graham asks, if you have an account on Lunarpedia, do you need another account for the others? Yes, they all have different accounts, but they're all free accounts. You can just go request those and we'll, we'll set you up. Okay, anything else? Any other questions or comments? Okay, everyone. Well, I know it's at, uh, th we're at the half hour mark, so there's a, two more sessions starting. Thanks a lot for your time today. Appreciate your time and uh, your interest, and I'll go ahead and, and end the meeting now. Have a great rest of your conference.